Greetings, viewers. Uh, today, in this exciting edition of the Geo Interview, we have with us Honorable Miss Jennifer Larson. She is the U.S. Consul General in Hyderabad, India. She was previously Director and Acting DAS of the Office of India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and Maldives Affairs. She also showed, served four years as the Deputy Principal Officer in Mumbai, India. Prior to completing a year-long course at the National Defense University in June 2016, she was spokesperson at the Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs. Ms. Larson served as principal officer in Benghazi, Libya, and then acting deputy director chief of mission uh, in Tripoli. She also uh, served in Pakistan, France, Sudan, Jerusalem, and Lebanon. Prior to joining the foreign office, foreign service, uh, Ms. Larson worked for NPR's San Francisco affiliate as a talk show producer. She completed her undergraduate and graduate work at the University of California, Berkeley, in comparative literature and Middle Eastern studies. It's a great honor for us to have you here, ma'am. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well. Really happy to be here with you. Uh, so, so transitioning from a talk show producer to uh, illustrious 21 years of service uh, in various countries, uh, and now serving as a consul general in Hyderabad, how has this journey shaped your perspective and approach to diplomacy? So I actually started when I was a student in Cairo um, back when I was at Berkeley, and uh, I went to do a year abroad, a study abroad program, uh, and then went back again with the Fulbright. And it was there that I was studying Arabic literature. Um, it, you start to learn the powers of stories and then also of interacting with people that you wouldn't have had the privilege of knowing before. Uh, going to be a talk show producer was the same thing, trying to draw out stories for people, trying to get them to talk to you, whether it be about their book or about what they're thinking about as a politician. Uh, and I think as a diplomat, you're also really keen or you really need to listen to people and to and to hear their story, to hear how they think about themselves, and to hear how they think about, for example, their country in position with the United States, which I represent. And so I think uh, all those things kind of came together to get me interested in uh, foreign policy. Uh, coming to my next question, uh, with approximately 25% of foreign students in the United States coming from India, could you please shed some light on the Consulate General in Hyderabad's role in assisting aspirants from Odisha, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh who wish to pursue higher education in the United States? Yes. So we have um, an advising uh, center called Education USA. Uh, we've got two here in Hyderabad and a few others within the district. And what they do is provide free, accurate, timely, personalized advice to students who would be considering studying in the United States. Um, they, I should, again, say that it's free. There's no need for students to pay uh, consultants if they're looking to study in the US. We have this resource here. And what they'll do is sit down with the students to understand what their, what are their dreams? What are the types of things that they would like to study? So many students just think of one or two universities in the US, whether perhaps one of their family members is there, or it's an estate where they know somebody, but there are more than 4,000 colleges and universities in the US. And so our advising system and the really skilled uh, advisors that we have can help you think about, do you wanna be in a small town? Would you like to be in a large town? Do you wanna commute? Would you like to live in a dormitory? So all of those things are uh, offered by us uh, to prospective students here. Uh -huh. Apart from education, another pillar of uh, strengthening India-U.S. relationship is enhancing trade. We had last last year trade more than 150 billion U.S. dollars. Uh, uh, coming to that, could you please elaborate on the presence of various U.S.-based firms operating in the Odisha, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh and discuss the measures taken by the Consulate General in Hyderabad to assist American businesses in establishing commercial links and expanding their exports? So thank you, Dasha. This is actually a very important part of what we do. We have something called the Foreign Commercial Service here in Hyderabad. Uh, we have them at most consulates around, um, and especially in Delhi. And what they do is that they work with U.S. companies who are looking to invest in this part of India, for example, to 
to help make the correct introductions, to explain to them what are the procedures to set up a, a business or to expand their business. Uh, and they also look to connect uh, Indian businesses with the United States. Those Indian businesses who are looking to set up um, operations in any part of the United States. We have a flagship program called Select USA, and it's led by the ambassador. Um, last year, we had the largest delegation ever, and quite a few of those, let me get the number actually, um, we had yeah, 29 were from Hyderabad, and so we're hoping this year, of course, to increase that. And that connects them to prospective um, uh, collaborators and clients in the U.S. Uh, we have here in Hyderabad more than 200 U.S. companies to include five of the top 10. Uh, they have their largest campuses outside of the United States here. Thinking about Google, Facebook, um, we have... Uh, yeah, Apple, Microsoft as well, and uh, Amazon, of course. Um, there's no other city in India which has this distinction. And what we're seeing, too, are companies who are already here, like uh, Deloitte, for example, or Goldman Sachs or others, are looking at this part not just to do back office uh, types of operations, but to do global centers of excellence. And that means that everything that a company is, is working on, whether it be... Uh, you know, whether it be the, the the human resources, whether it be the law uh, the law services, uh, whether it be hiring, whether it be training, whether it be producing, all of that now is being centralized in these places here. And I think that's a testament to just really the growing talent pool that we see here. We see this <clears throat> mostly here in Hyderabad, but it's certainly increasing as well in Andhra and Orissa um, with a lot of new incubated, uh, incubator startups and American companies are looking with interest at some of these new Indian companies. Thank you for the insight, ma'am. Uh, apart from business, now coming to the next pillar of uh, joint co cooperation, that is culture. I see people yeah. in New York celebrating in international yoga. I see people, uh, friends in Delhi is celebrating, you know, watching Super Bowl and everything. Uh, please let us know the steps taken by the Consulate General in Hyderabad to promote culture, cultural accents, exchange between two countries, with a special emphasis on the role of American corner in Hyderabad and Vishakhapatna oh. in fostering the culture accent. So I should say first, too, that uh, when we had the International Day of Yoga, uh, I had the opportunity to be part of that with the Indian Embassy on the Mall in Washington two years ago. Um, and uh, that was just, you know, an incredible celebration of a form of expression um, that obviously originated here in India, but has taken off, um, especially in the United States. Uh, talking about the American Corners, um, we host films, activities, discussions, a lot of our diplomats who aren't necessarily involved with cultural exchange, who are doing consular work, for example, we'll ask them to go host discussions or talk about, you know, what is it like to be a young diplomat or what is uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday mean in the United States? Um, so we've got, as you mentioned, we have one here, uh, one in Vizek, and then um, it's we they're, they're fully staffed. They're fully open to not just the universities where they're located, but to anybody who can has the you know the, the desire to come in and look to look at the library, to use the computers, uh, things like that. Um, we're also very expansively engaged with the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation, which is a fund that's global, uh, in which we work with partners. In our case, it's the Khan Foundation to identify cultural sites or heritage sites of particular note and develop plans to, uh, to, to restore them or reconstruct them. Uh, we have two right now here in Hyderabad. One is the Paiga Tombs, which is the resting place for one of the noble families from here. And the other is the Kutub Shahi Tombs, uh, another, uh, another gorgeous uh, space here in the center of Hyderabad that's um, that we're helping restore uh, some of the step wells as well as some of the masonry. So uh, I think that those are things that are, are, are some examples of the cultural exchange. Uh, the best cultural exchange, of course, is when we have Indian students going to the United States, interacting with their American counterparts on campuses, or having what we would really like to see is having more American students have the opportunity to come to India. Uh, and to foster those types of cultural people to people exchanges. Um, of course, right now, the, the larger percentage are Indian students looking to uh, go to the United States. 
that's a very thrilling to know ma'am uh, coming to my next question could you please shed light on the contributions of us citizens residing in the state of telangana andhra pradesh and odisha and professions in which they are uh, predominantly involved so we don't necessarily track which um which i guess professions or engagements people are working at for us citizens here but what i can tell you is that uh, we see so many us uh, us citizens who are now the ceos coos cfos of major corporations multinationals here in in hyderabad uh it could be a, a us um, corporation like deloitte it can be uh, in you know in, in indian corporation uh, and a lot of these americans had gone to the us to study and then eventually decided that they wanted to come back to india because of the opportunities here um also because of family ties and so we see more and more of that so just the talent pool that had initially gone to the us to study has now come back to india which is really uh, an incredible thing to see um and there again in, in all sectors teaching uh, certainly a lot it's in the tech sector as you can imagine um and uh yeah that mostly i've seen what we see the most is mostly the tech finance and pharmaceutical sector here um uh, coming to my next question uh bn the geostrata have the strategic study center and one of the prime focuses of the strategic study center is to track in the india us joint defense cooperation uh recently two months ago uh, both countries concluded tri services tiger triumph exercise on ins jalashwa uh and the we are seeing the role uh, defense cooperation is increasing day by day uh, how do you see this mutual commitment of both countries uh to ensure free open and prosperous indo so tiger triumph was the largest bilateral military exercise between us and india ever and it was more than 3000 service members across multiple uh, parts of our armed services it was largely a simulation of a humanitarian assistance disaster relief um uh exercise uh it went on for two weeks um, i you know i had the chance to be there for parts of it and it really focused on joint interoperability uh us our our different service uh, members working on each other's ships working with each other's equipment to see how we could jointly work together in an emergency very very quickly um and it took a lot of coordination a year of planning um and i mean they brought entire medical like field hospitals in to set up uh, at the uh, at the the beach there uh, as well as did uh, amphibious landings uh repelling from helicopters each other working with um the different uh, different the different flight platforms it was really really incredible um and this is you know we, this is something that we hope to do and well, we have done annually since 2019 um this one went off so well that the eastern naval command and our own um pacific fleet are now working on the next one to make it even even bigger we do this bilaterally of course we have things with on a more multilateral level such as malabar which is um, something that's loosely affiliated with the quad but just the the power and the extent of two of the world's largest militaries in working together in the indo-pacific for whether it be for combating illegal fishing or for working together in anti-piracy um for to just patrol the waters and ensure that there is freedom of movement is really something that's um it just come up so well in the past decade or so uh and uh, the, the types of training that we're doing together i mean even land based here within the country itself are things that I think both of our governments are extremely committed to because we learn so much from each other um the the uh, indian army shows us how to operate in high altitude environments for example uh and then and we work together again like in the sea for some of these naval exercises thank you for the wonderful insights ma'am as we are coming to the end of the interview uh i would like to ask you a final question uh given that the majority of our audience is youth primarily students uh, what advice would you offer to them uh, you in utilizing their unique strengths to contribute to uh, in building a better world so this is really india century um and the india us strategic partnership is our strongest and our most important in the world and i would say um for students or for youth of the student age who are able to you know finish a degree or to uh, pursue an education whether it be here whether it be overseas uh, is key this is how you 
start to define your your dreams, your capabilities, you build your networks. Um, the so many parts of the United States are looking towards India to as you know as as the next as the next generation of talent of consumers, of course, uh, and of partners. Um, this is a really interesting part of India here uh, in Andhra and um, in Telangana. And I know you're based in Delhi, so you may not have necessarily the regional perspective here, but Telugu is the fastest growing language in America. And that really is something that is a testament to how strong our ties are. And a lot of those ties began with students. Um, so I think it's just, it's, a, it's an immense time of opportunity, I think for the next generation here in India. And what we would hope is again, to be able to get our, our people and our students and, and younger communities working together, whether it be you know, virtually with something like Geostrata talking to each other or exchanges or the different kind of people to people things that we do. Um, I mean, again, myself as a student studying abroad was the first thing that sort of changed it really changed my life essentially and brought me to India, um, which has been my home now for four years in Mumbai and now almost two in Hyderabad. So I would just say study, uh, dream, and know that this is uh, that the, the world is looking at you. Thank you for the advice, ma'am, and thank you for this enriching conversation. It was indeed a great honor uh, for us to have you. Thank you. Thank you. And have a good day. It's really nice to be here. Thank you.